Recently, I got the opportunity to sit down and chat with Dr. Irene Davis about some of the downsides of using repetitive, low-impact endurance activities as your primary form of exercise, and why activities like this are particularly problematic for anyone with low bone density. Now, Dr. Davis has an uber-impressive resume. Among other things, she was the founding director of the Spalding National Running Center at Harvard Medical School. She's currently a professor at the University of South Florida and president of the American College of Sports Medicine. So she's a wealth of information, and this is what she had to say on the subject. I don't think running is the best thing for someone to do as a sole activity. As, as something that's an adjunct, sure. But running, first of all, your bone gets numb to the impact after a while. You don't get more bone laid down. Your bone kind of, the signal to create more bone gets shut off after a while with, with, with running, with low kind of impact activities, repetitive low impact activities. But if you do multi-directional activities and don't, do, don't load it in exactly the same way, you get stronger bones. And there've been some, some really important studies that have shown that if you compare children adolescents was the age group who were involved only in running. And then those who were in, involved in running and multi-directional sports, their bones were stronger. Beautiful. And if you look across activities um, to involve all kinds of sports, the, the, the activities that involve more multi-directional movements and even things like volleyball and basketball and court sports and field sports build much stronger bone. As you can see here, there's been a lot of research done on this topic. And at this point, we have many different studies showing low bone density in both male and female distance runners across multiple age groups. This study published in the Journal of Bone and Mineral Research was particularly interesting because the researchers compared and contrasted three different groups of young women. They looked at collegiate gymnasts, collegiate distance runners, and a control group. And they analyzed everything from lean body mass to body fat percentage to calcium intake, and even the history and frequency of their menstrual cycles. They were really trying to isolate just for the activities that they were involved in. And what they found was virtually no differences in terms of lean body mass or calcium intake or even menstrual history among those three groups. But there was a significant difference when it came to bone mineral density, and the distance runners had the lowest bone mineral density of any of the three groups. It was lower than the gymnasts and even lower than the control group. So with that knowledge under your belt, the million dollar question is, what's the most effective way to build bone density? And for that, I want to direct your attention to this 2018 paper published in the journal Biomedical Research International. These researchers did an extensive review of all the recently published literature on different types types of exercise and their effect on bone density. What these researchers found is that weight-bearing aerobic exercises like walking, jogging, stair climbing, and Tai Chi by themselves did not appear to improve bone mass. However, these types of activities may be able to limit the progressive loss of bone over time. They found that the exercise type that was most effective for building bone mineral density at the hips was progressive resistance strength training for the lower extremities. And for building bone mineral density at the spine, the best form of exercise was a multi-component training exercise program or cross training that involves strength training, short bouts of aerobic training, balancing, and dance. These researchers also pointed out that training using whole body vibration is effective for improving bone mineral density. However, I wanna remind you that the most important thing when using whole body vibration to increase bone density is that the sets where you're exposed to vibration and your muscles are active should not last longer than 30 to 60 seconds in duration, and they should be immediately followed by an equal period of time where you are not exposed to vibration. And the reason that we do this is exactly what Dr. Davis was talking about at the outset of this video. You have to retain sensitivity of your bones to the stimulus of impact, or in this case, vibration, in order to get the benefits of increasing bone density. If you keep them exposed with repetitive jogging or with repetitive vibration that goes on for long lengths of time, you lose most of that benefit and it can even become detrimental. If you enjoyed this short video, then hit that thumbs up button and make sure that you're subscribed to the channel because next week I'm gonna be releasing the full interview with Dr. Irene Davis and that segment has a ton of great nuggets in it, just like this one. I'll see you then.